How many of you cook a beautiful piece of steak and then you're so hungry you cut right into it? What happens when you do that? You lose all the juice. So part of the searing process is to lock the juice in, right? Same thing with fish. So if you don't let the fish rest, what happens when you cut into it? You lose all that beautiful juice. So always let the fish rest. That's, that's number one. Now, I have such a smart wife. I was like, honey, how are we gonna activate these rice papers? And this is how we make original spring rolls. I'm not, we're doing spring rolls on steroids, by the way, today. Completely left field, something you've never seen before, and I won a competition here in Hawaii with it. And again, if, if you're bragging and not sharing, it's not cool, right? So we're sharing. And I said, so honey, how are we gonna do that? She goes, no worries, we got the coffee machine, put the hot water in here, put it in the bowl, we're good to go. Thank you, honey. <laughs> See, everybody thinks the chef is great. The chef is only great if they have somebody making them great. So here's the cool thing, guys. Before we activate that, and then the magic and the fun begins, okay? Um, this is Ryan, Ryan's gonna be helping us over here. Ryan knows you guys are hungry. Okay, and Ryan knows that you guys are not going to be listening to me talk all day and you guys want your food, correct? So why he's going to start the torching process while I start the magic over here, and if you will. So I'm going to hand this cool other, we love our toys, that's just all it is. It's fire, right? When you're young, you get in trouble for, you know, playing with fire. When you get older and you get paid to do it, awesome. Um, so let me explain what he's doing over here and I'll hold one up and we're about to make that right now. This is not your ordinary Vietnamese roll. And I'll tell you what's normal about it. The vermicelli noodles, which is right here, which you activate in water for three to four minutes. We are putting that in here. That's right here. Anytime I change something, I want to keep the integrity of the culture of that dish and something that you identify to go, oh, that is a Vietnamese roll. So we're keeping this. Is that cool? The other thing we're doing is basil, mint, and cilantro because we identify by that, right? Those are the, our aromatics. Everything else is left field. Forget the shrimp, forget everything else. Look at the colors on this, guys. There's edible orchids in there, there's, there's hearts of palm, there's all this gorgeousness in there. And then we rolled it with that togadashi and a little furikake. So give it a little extra spin, yeah? So it looks good, right? So what if I told you we we're gonna torch this? Yeah, you look at me weird, yeah? So 300 people during the Hawaii Foods Manufacturing Food Association, I used 20 local ingredients, and I, I would have never thought to torch it, but they challenged me outside the box and we won first place. And this has been one of the highly, I'm not allowed at a party unless I'm bringing these. So I chose this for you guys today. When they said seafood, I'm like, okay, we're gonna replace the lobster, the shrimp, the scallops, whatever I wanted to with ceviche capachi. So Ryan, you do the honors. What he's gonna be doing is torching the, each end, and I'll do the demonstration for you over here when I get to that part. It's like shrink wrap. It kind of shrinks in so it doesn't fall apart on you. And then it's gonna blister and bubble, which is gonna create this smoky, umami, crispy, cool coolness to it. So go ahead, uh, Ryan. And if you don't mind, let's do it over the other aluminum pan and maybe on top of here. Safety is key, guys. That way we're not burning the table. So now we're gonna start with the roll. And what I'm doing, just real quick, is I'm slicing this beautiful hamaji, I mean kabaji, sorry, and putting the ceviche over it. And that is it, guys, you just let that sit. And that citrus is gonna impart that flavor and get that beautifulness going. I'm gonna set this aside right over here until we get to that roll. And who here has ever rolled a Vietnamese roll? It's kind of intimidating, right? Who, do you do the perfect roll or do you do the one where it's all falling apart? Okay, when I first started this, it was falling apart. I'm gonna teach you how to not let it fall apart. Uh, Ryan, how about this? Do this. I got it. Got it? Okay, cool. Always got our toys. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this is we wanna put it in water. Who here has ever put it in warm water and then it, we put it in too long and then it fell apart? So the trick is, you see what I'm doing? I'm turning like this. I'm turning it as I go and I'm feeling it and I'm like, it's not ready, but trust me, it's ready. It, it still feels kind of like hard, right? You want that. As it sits, it's gonna activate. The warm water activates that. Too hot, it's gonna get soggy on you. Too cold, you'll be sitting here all day. That's why my wife is awesome. 
So literally guys, 15, about 15 seconds is all it took. You go any more than that, it's gonna stick to your board. So just 15 seconds, warm water, you're good to go. Now, remember that identifiable, we're gonna use the vermicelli noodles. And the cool thing about this guys, you throw them up on the ceiling and see if they stick. No, I was just seeing if there's, you know, bringing the little kid out in here. Um, three to four minutes in boiling water, you get this, pull them down. We're gonna put that across just like so. And because we want excitement, right? We took that cabbage and we pickled it. Pickling just is vinegar and sugar, that's it. It's a couple minutes, you got that beautiful, bright, gorgeous color. Can you guys see that, by the way? Yeah. Looks good, looks good so far, yes? Yes. Okay, who here likes shisho? Shisho leaves, micro shisho from Mari's Garden. So we're gonna take that and put that across. Why? Because when you're doing something sashimi style, it's a match made in heaven, the chemistry works, but it looks beautiful, doesn't it? And then it gets even cooler, guys. The hearts of palm, and this is a nice little trick. This is a Japanese mandolin, Amazon, $22. You just shave it thin, and you get these beautiful Big Island hearts of palm. I love to use all local sustainable products, and these are my super favorite. I could just smoke these and eat these all day, or just eat them raw, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple across. Can you guys see the rings and the cool contrast on that? When I do competitions, I usually garnish with that because it's art, right? And we're artists. And art is imperfection, right? So there's no wrong way, there's no right way. Art is art. So we're gonna put that in there like this. And then who here has ever seen purple cauliflower? Purple cauliflower. I, no, seriously. The first carrots that were ever, ever on this earth were purple. And for marketing purposes, they turn them orange. So think about that one. But purple cauliflower, I shaved it with a knife and we're using that for a crunch texture because I didn't know if you guys were allergic to peanuts, so I left the nuts out. So for the crunchy part, we're using shaved raw cauliflower. Why? We want to be healthy too, right? Flavors are awesome and it looks cool. Who here has ever seen a watermelon radish or a candy striped meat? How about that color? Beautiful, right? So again, Japanese mandolin, we take this beautiful, this is the watermelon radish because it looks like a watermelon. We take this beautiful candy stripe beet and it looks like a candy stripe, right? And you just shave that and we put that right over the top. So when, you, when we cut into these rolls and we look at them, when we eat them, they're gonna just be beautiful. That was the whole purpose. And then we got these yummy uh, pea sprouts from Mari's Garden. And I give these to my servers and they're like, oh my God, it tastes like I'm eating fresh peas. And that's the whole purpose. Not only do they look cool, look at that. And these were in the garden yesterday and they picked that just for you guys. I said, look, I got a special audience. They're VIP. I want them to feel special. They said, no problem, chef. We got you. Look how beautiful that is. And when you eat into this, you're going to taste fresh peas exploding in your mouth. So the trick is, guys, is see how the ends are going this way? I took it like this. That way, when we cut it in half, everybody gets a beautiful presentation. And then we got the corn sprouts. And guess what these taste like? Awesome corn. So look at the colors we got going on here. Cool so far, yeah? We don't need anything else. Vegetarian, we're, we're good to go right here, yeah? Um, now remember the identifiables, which is basil. That mint is gonna give you that added, you're not gonna know what it is, but it's awesome, and you go, oh, Vietnamese roll, of course. We're gonna put the mint across, and the cilantro is that aromatic pop. How are we doing with the uh, caramelization? Doing good? As soon as we're ready, we're gonna get the plates up. We're gonna cut them in half, start putting them on there, and then I'll talk about the sauce before I get done rolling here. Okay, the last part, guys. I want this to look beautiful for you. So, as if it's not beautiful enough, right? We're gonna take that fish. And the best part about that is the center is still sashimi gray, but it's caramelized on the outside, okay? So now when I roll this, here's a trick to a Vietnamese roll. You know how they make that shrimp pop with the, with the aromatics? This is what they do. You take the bottom, you take your fingers right here, and you roll it as tight as you can right there, and you stop, okay? The next thing you do is you put your fish there, or your shrimp, or whatever you like to do, and then you take these beautiful edible orchids, see that color? Put that face down like this. These nasturtiums from Marty's garden as well, look how beautiful that is. 
is pull the pedal. And again, the, these are all edible. We're artists, remember? We're playing the canvas. And now we tuck the ends in like we're doing a love note to our family because we're about to feed them, right? And you wanna go, you wanna come in as tight as you can. Keep this roll tight, guys, that's the secret. And finish rolling it. And you don't have to lick your finger and do that on an envelope because the water did that for you. But look how beautiful that is. Just like that, guys. And then you light it and you smoke the cigar. No, just kidding. But we are gonna do some smoking now, okay? This would have been cool just cut in half and serve you right now, right? Yeah, let's not stop there. We're gonna put it in a pan. Remember that togadashi mix with the furikake and I did a little bit of seasoning? Now, this is where I said, you know, some people might get spicy, some people not might not. So I just did a little bit. How's that? Okay. He's starting the magic for you. You're going to be eating in about minutes, not even. I think he used all the gas. Thanks, Ryan. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. There we go. All right. Is this the part where I don't? Yeah, I have to be careful. So let me just show you guys what's happening here. Remember that end? See that crust that we're getting? It literally like shrink wrap, so you don't have to worry about this thing falling apart on you. And how do you think I got 50 of these over here? You ever stick these things next to each other without doing this and you can't get them apart and you're like, oh, and they rip apart and that's why you gotta do them all in minute, which means last second. Once you do this, they're not gonna stick to each other. So you can put a hundred of these together for a party at your own house. That's why I'm doing this, guys. I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm showing you how easy it is. And you guys could be the rock star at your house. Now, it blisters. It bubbles up and blisters. And I've had people say they've never tasted that textural or that flavor before. So creating something we've been eating for a long time into a new way that people appreciate, to me, that's what passion in cooking is all about. So when I tell you that we won seafood, you understand why we won seafood? I, I did four dishes like that, pretty crazy. And here's the best part is I always try to keep it local and that's what challenges us as a chef. So when you're at your house, how many of you are gonna try and do this? How many of you are going to put three items in and say, I'm done, man. I'm not Chef James. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm going to cut this in half. I just want you to see those colors. Look how gorgeous that is. Oops, we don't need that any 